What's going on you guys and welcome back to the channel. Here is where we have the necessary conversations around the things that we experience in life, things that pertain to us while using fact-based logic as well as sharing some of my own personal opinions or personal experiences while at the same time understanding that there are other viewpoints or other perspectives that may or may not align with that of our own. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into today's topic. Like the title says, is there any hope for the broke man in today's dating market? So keep in mind, when I say that, it depends on so many different factors. Um, who you are as a person, your confidence level, um, where you are in the world, um, what type of people are available to you uh, based on you know the areas that you live in and how populated they are. Me, myself, living in Atlanta, Georgia, living in America, um, being broke and not having the most confidence wasn't working. <laughs> it wasn't working. Now, I know that there are a lot of men out here that can relate when it comes to feeling like they're not enough because they don't have enough money in their pocket, they don't have enough assets, they don't have a home, they don't have a car, this, that, and the fourth. Trust me, I understand. I completely know exactly where you're coming from because that was me for so long. That was me for a very, very long time. I didn't have much of anything. I couldn't even afford to take myself out there on the date. So I had to work, 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 and grind to put myself in the position that I am now to where I can feel more adequate, you know? So looking at this whole dating thing, being broken dating from different perspectives, we all know that there are young men, older men that are perfectly capable of dating or figuring out how to date with having little to no money. And then there are the ones like myself where you just can't get past the fact that you don't have enough and you don't feel as though you're deserving of love because of that. Now that I put a frame around those two, let's dive a little bit deeper into the men that feel as though they can't date because of their situation and try to come up with the understanding of how some of us got there and why some of us feel that these women will not accept us for who and how we are and how we should view the women that will not accept us for who and how we are. First, let's start back from the beginning because this had to date back far. This had to go back far feeling as though that you don't have enough, you're not worthy enough, like what got you there? I know for me, for instance, it started when I was a kid. I used to hear things from my aunts and my mom saying that if a man don't have any money, then he's not of any value to me, that I can do it myself, blah, 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 blah. If this guy, if this man is not giving me money, then I don't want him, I don't need him if he doesn't give me money. That's all I ever heard coming from my household and some of the women around me. So if you as a young boy heard things like that growing up, then it's going to put you in that same frame of mind as you get older, trying to figure things out and not ever having the proper guidance, kind of like myself. And I don't know a lot of young men are out here the same way. They never got that, that male guidance. I myself never got it. I didn't get it until I was 19 years old. And if I get into that story, you'll see how important it is to have that dominant male role model figure in your life and how much that person can catapult you forward in life if they're doing right by you, if you have that, that positive male role model figure in your life. So like I was saying, I didn't have that. I had it for one year, but up until that time, there was no guidance for me to know how I should be moving as a young boy, as a man throughout life. So all I had was these questions that were being constantly unanswered and having this type of narrative being pushed upon me all the time that a man don't have any money then he's not of any value to a woman now when you're being told that especially in your own household that can mess you up in more than one way um, obviously you're feeling as though you're not good enough as you are and then the other thing is if you have love for that person that is feeding you that information like i did i love my mother love her to death but hearing those words come from her made me feel as though I wasn't good enough to find a woman at least on her level. And my mother didn't have much of anything going for it. She didn't have a job. You know what I'm saying? She wasn't in any relationship. She, I never saw her in a relationship, but it made me think, okay, if I can't get a woman like her, 
then I definitely won't be able to get any of these other women out here. And knowing that can hurt you more because it can make you feel like, wow, like, well, then what does my mother feel about me? You know, I'm seeking the approval because usually we do. We seek our parents approval. You know, I'm seeking the approval of my mother. And if I'm not living up to the standard that she has placed upon men, then I'm definitely not deserving of any love outside of what I'm receiving from her. So I said all this to say that understand if you're feeling as though you're not enough, date back, look back, find out why you feel that way. A lot of it could also have to do with social media, it could have to do with these movies, it could have to do with these Disney fairy tales, it could have to do with what we see in front of us on a daily basis when it comes to society and what, this is, and what society is telling us is acceptable. It could be that for you. I'm a little bit older, so my, my trauma happened a little bit further back. But as I got older, all that stuff also fed into it as well. Now that we kind of talked about how we could have gotten there ourselves, let's talk about why we're hearing it from a lot of these modern day women. You know, like I said, I, I'm li I live in Atlanta. You know, they got a whole lifestyle, a flashy lifestyle out here. So I have to talk about it. I'm experiencing in the way that I'm telling you guys right now. So what's the other thing? These women, how come a lot of these women are feeling as though that you as a man have to have and earn and be so much, but even if they themselves are broke, you have to accept them for how they are. Doesn't sound right, does it? Doesn't sound right. I remember back in the day, women were ready to build a pond with a man, help him build his empire. Now they want the man to already have his empire and they want to come in and be a part of it. Mm. It doesn't seem too fair, right? I agree, it doesn't, it doesn't. So, let's talk about something that we're not hearing enough people talk about um, when it comes to why these women are feeling this way. Um, and wh why is it justifiable? Now, you have some that are just, they feel like this shit don't stack. Yes, look, this channel, we'll be talking freely over here, so be ready for it. Yes, some of these women feel like their shit don't stink, but then you have the ones, that keep this in mind, that their parents growing up struggled, maybe. Their father, their mother, they struggled. These kids saw that in the household. These kids experienced that. The mother and father struggled to keep food on the table for them. This is not a lifestyle that anyone ever wants to live. You never want to live a struggle lifestyle. I myself struggled as a kid. My mother and I, when I first came into this world, we didn't have a place to stay. We couch surfed on any relative couch that would let us live there for as long as they would let us live there. We went to a shelter. We went to a shelter and, and, and tried to see if we can get a room there or bed there, I should say. It, it's not a healthy, comfortable life or a comfortable situation that anyone would ever want to be in. So it also would make sense that a woman would want to find a man who is sustained, who is successful, so that her herself would never have to go through what it was that she went through when she was a kid. So you got a lot of women out here that aren't saying that, but that was something that they experienced when they were younger. Not all of them. Some of them are just greedy. <laughs> Some of them think that they're entitled because they're attractive, or they think that they're entitled because of what's between their legs. When truth be told, every female has the same thing. Some, of, some is better than others, but all of them think that what they have is good when they don't have what I have to experience what they have to know if it's good or not. You know what I'm saying? So we gotta, we gotta tone that down. We gotta tone that down. But I think that's real necessary to understand that coming from both sides, men and women, if you struggled as a child and you don't want that for yourself in the future, you put yourself in a position to where you never have to experience that. For a lot of women, it may be to just get with a successful man, for a lot of men like myself, it is to put yourself in a position to where you won't have to 
put that same type of burden that you experience yourself on your family in the future. Now, going back to being able to find someone while you're in the struggle. I know for me, I felt like it was impossible. I felt like I was too down and out on my luck and on myself to even be in the position emotionally to put myself out there to someone. Now I know people, predominantly females, that are capable of putting themselves in the position or that are capable of stepping out there, putting themselves back into the dating market finding someone and that making them happy all over again when they're in their lowest point when they're down and out which is never a healthy thing to do i always try to tell and advise people hey get yourself right first before you try to step back out there or before you try to get into a relationship get yourself right first discover yourself get your shit in order clean your house first but too often do I see, especially with women, they're very emotional creatures. They feel as though that they need a man in their life in order to be happy. I once heard Jordan Peterson say that um, when it comes to purpose, most men try to find where they belong in the world first and they put love on the back burner. It's not that love isn't important to them, but finding where they belong in the world Finding themselves, who they are as a man, is far more important. Love can come last. That's exactly what I did. Let me pave my way, then I'll work on the love part. But for women, a lot of women will put themselves in a position to be loved by a man. And then afterwards, try to find where they belong in the world. It's like once they have the love in order relationship family friend once they once they know that they have all three of those locked down and that's where they find their happiness then hey what else can i do oh should i go to school should i you know find this career have a family this that and the fourth a lot of women tend to give their purpose around love and i see it i see it with every female friend that i have love is so important to them that they're constantly seeking it and when you understand that, it kind of makes sense that so many women may cycle through a good amount of men before they find the one that will settle down with them. And if we dive a little bit deeper, it makes it somewhat funny to think about that because a lot of women tend to shy away from how many relationships or how many men that they've been with, knowing that that high number may scare off new potential partners or may scare off your potential husband because that number may be high. Because truth be told, and I know too many women like this, they may go through three or four different dudes a year, minimum. Some of them that I know, especially if they're attractive. They may go through three or four, maybe even five guys in one fiscal year because, hey, my guy might have a relationship that lasts a month, two, three months, four months, whatever it may be, but none of them sustainable enough to stay in the long run or stay for the long run. So when you add that up from high school to you're 30 years old, that number can be very, very high if each year is two, three, or four, five different guys. And I know, fellas, I know it's unfair. It's an unfair advantage that these women may have where, yeah, they might be able to obtain so many different partners throughout their lifetime, um, while us ourselves can't get it the same way. Um, and, but we know why that is. Women get it when they want it, men get it when they can't. <laughs> so going back to my broke dudes, what can we do to put ourselves in a position to get dates, to get women, to get laid, if that's the goal? What is it that we can do while we're still broke, huh? Well, truth be told, we should be working on putting ourselves in a better position in life but for a lot of us that is kind of confused on what that looks like because not everybody knows who they are or what they want to be or what their purpose is in life and it, it kind of hurts it hurts the soul to feel as though i have to find that out i have to figure that out first 
before dealing with women. Like I said, a lot of men find that purpose first, put women on the back burner like I did myself. And then for some of us, we, we may never find that. That may never happen. But I don't want to be dry <laughs> before, before that happens, if it does happen. So what can I do? For one, work on that confidence. Work on that confidence. And the best way to do it is to get rejected a lot, a lot. Go out there and talk to as many women as you possibly can and find out based on their responses if what you're saying is acceptable or not, but do the homework. Don't just keep saying, repeating and doing stuff over and over and that stuff not working for you. All right now, I'm back in my dating mode. I'm about to go on a little trip this weekend. I'm coming back. I got five, six different dates lined up. Well, five, five, yeah, five different women, five different dates. All of that's gonna be practice for me. Some of them I'm gonna screw up with. Some of them I'm gonna screw. <laughs> that's just what it is. That's just what it is. But practice, practice makes perfect. One thing I used to notice about guys back in the day, the guys that had multiple women their main woman or both the women or all three of the women, however many it was, they always wanted him. Even knowing that there were other women that were trying to get at him as well or other women that were spending their time with him as well. It was almost like these women were ready to battle it out. Maybe not in the physical sense, but they wanted to fight for this man's love, affection, and attention. But I'm like, dang, like you got a single guy over here, me, <laughs> that is ready to be with you and only you. But you keep pushing me away. Why? Why is that? Because he is viewed as valuable. If other women want him, then there's something about him. And I first learned that mess back in high school. You talking about, I went my whole entire high school career, didn't have not one single girlfriend, 12th grade year, this new chick came, this new chick came to the school. She was eyeing me. We started talking and now there was five other women that was ready to fight her, physically fight her over me. Girls I had never spoke to. Girls I had never even thought about was ready to fight this girl over me. Now someone wants me, now you all will want me as well. You gotta talk to as many of them as possible. The more you talk to, the more likely your chances are of landing one or two of them. And then with that, other women are gonna find you desirable as well. But something that some of these women won't do, that we have to do, if we're not at the status or at the level that we wanna be at in our life, we have to lower our standards. Someone told me that recently. They were like, yo, how many bodies you got? How many? I was like, uh, not many, uh, not a whole lot. And they're like, what? Dude, you're older than me. How, how do I have more bodies than you? I'm like, you know what I mean? I guess I'm pretty picky. He's like, that's your problem, bro. That's your problem. You're like, man, you ain't giving the big girls love too? I was like, nah, man, nah. He's like, man, you gotta, you gotta knock down a few big girls too, bro. Ah, I was like, dang, for real. <laughs> ah, I say this to say that you really do. You really do have to lower your standards in order to gain the experience needed to get what it is that you really want out of life. Even all of my female friends have also told me that. They were like, man, knock down the big girls, bro. I'm like, what? I don't want to do that. They're like, come on now. It's going to help you build confidence and it's going to help you um, gain the experience needed. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with bigger girls, you know what I'm saying? I got some of my friends, heck, most of my friends, they skinny little pistols and all they want is the big ones. They're like, I don't want no skinny girl. I don't want slim either. I want a big girl, give me the big ones. I'm like, okay. Um, I guess I'm the opposite, opposite of the track, right? I'm, I'm a big guy, so I want the slim ones. But um, yeah, that's just what it is, man. Lower your standards. Lower your standards and it is gonna help um, build up your confidence because one thing I know for me whenever I'm around a very attractive female not now and not I'm so glad that it, whoo, whoo, I used to be shitting bricks terrified 
to be around a attractive female or talk to her, I would start pouring sweat, I would stutter like crazy, and I hated that. I was like that all my teen years through most of my 20s, well, all of my 20s. I was like that through all of my 20s. I'd be around the track, I was, whew, yeah, trying to talk to her, sweating, stuttering like crazy. But had I practiced with females that maybe wasn't the most attractive, then at least I would have gained the experience and the confidence needed in order to know how to deal and talk to women because on the surface level, they may seem different when it comes to the appearance and the attractiveness, but beneath the surface, they're just about the same. You know what I'm saying? They're just about the same. So yeah, that's it. That's all I'm gonna say for now. I gotta get out of here, go meet with my chiropractor. But anyway, y'all know what time it is. Like this video, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned for more. As always, you can find your boy on the gram and Twitter at Artie Kicks, and I will catch you in the next one. See ya!